Hi there, it's Simone. Tonight, Jason will be going over the 500 plus Unreal Engine game sample animations and how to convert them to root motion so they can be blended together and used in the sequencer for cinematics. Well, that sounds quite fascinating. I sure hope someone understood all that. I had to look it up. It turns out if you don't bake in the root motion before using the animations, you won't be able to blend them together very easily. Take it away, Jason. So I'll show you what I mean. If you add like a climbing animation, so I'll show you this one. This is set to in place right now. So if you if you did everything in place, that'd be fine. But this is a climbing animation. He should actually be raising an elevation. In order to, to enable that, you have to right click on here and swap root bone. And if you enable that setting there, swap root bone actor, it will it will allow that animation to function. But then if you add a running animation after it, it's not like other animations like from Mixamo where you can actually continue from its endpoint. You can see how he drops down to the floor here. There's no way to blend that. So if you right click on here and go match root bone, he just drops right back down to the ground. It's not set up to prioritize root motion animation. So it's not really going to work very well for cinematic purposes. For instance, like if, even if you change the Z height, um, it still drops down. It's a limitation of, of the way this, this system is set up. So you have to actually export the animations out and I'll show you how to do that. This is probably the most simple way that's possible. I would love to figure out how to do uh, animation blueprints and things like that, but I haven't gotten that advanced yet. So this is get a, a good way to just get started on blending animations for cinematic purposes. And by the end of this, you'll be able to see how when he climbs up, he can then start running forward because that's what he should be doing. So in order to do that, we have, first of all, you have to go download the game pack. So let's just go there and I'll show you what, where to get that. So it's actually right on the main page. If you open up Unreal Engine, you can actually either click on this or go to the marketplace and search for game animation sample pack. So I already own it, but if you, if you click on it, it'll have like an add to cart option. Act like you're going to buy it. If people are new to Unreal, it'll, your the animation pack will be in this vault down here and you can just click on create project, search for it. And then once you open it up, then you'll end up with uh, with this right here. So th uh, the next thing to do is you're going to go to content in the content browser. Just go to the content folder, and then it's under characters, UEFN mannequin meshes. So this is the first place we're going to start. We're going to export the skeleton that's going to be used as the the target source. So you have to have a compatible skeleton to start with and then that's going to be used to um, to retarget the animations later and the whole retargeting thing don't get freaked out by that um, I it's intimidating but if you use the retargeting system that's built in it's really easy and that's why I'm showing why I'm demonstrating this because I'm trying to make it as easy as possible for myself I don't necessarily need to know the the uh, the way to do it with Python or scripting or that kind of thing I just want to get going on creating stuff and animating things. So this is, I, I feel like the least complicated way to do it. Go ahead and right click on this. So once you found the, the mannequin, just right click on it. And then you're going to go asset actions, just do export. You want to keep it somewhere that you can find it easily. I want to show you the settings too. So I'm just going to hit save so you can see what I'm talking about. So in here, the FBX export options, you want to make sure hit reset to, to default, just to be sure that everything's default ex except for this setting map skeletal motion to root. That's the important one. I don't actually know for sure that it's necessary for the skeleton, but it will be for the animations. So uh, you might as well check that now and then just hit export. Next thing is the animations. So we're going to go here. So it's still under UEFN mannequin and then animations. You can't just select all these folders and export them, but what you can do is go to filters, see animation and then animation sequence. So now you've got all the animation sequences here only that are showing and just click on any of them, click one and then do control a to select all. 
then right click and choose asset actions bulk export is what you want and it's going to say you're about to load 133 assets i don't know why it picked that number but that's not 133 it's it's as you can see down here it's 521 so it's 521 animations that you're exporting so just go ahead and hit yes just ignore that message I, you definitely want to create a folder. I mean, it's going to actually create some subfolders for you and it, it'll create a folder structure already, but just create a, a, a folder, maybe called UF, UEFN animations or something that makes sense to you or game animations, something that you can easily find because the naming on these is pretty complicated. So you want to at least be able to figure out where, the, what folder you're putting them in. I've already exported them to this folder. It does take a little while to export. The import is what takes the longest. And so in here, I'm going to actually cancel out of this, but it's the same thing. If you hit reset default, you just want to make sure you check the box for map skill, little motion to root. This is very important in the animations. Hit reset defaults just to be on the safe side and then check this box. Go ahead and export it out. So we're basically done in here. So we can close this and I don't need to save anything. Go ahead and open a new project, or if you have an existing project you want to import it into, go ahead and open that project. And then you're going to import the animations in. And I've already done that, but I will show you how the process works. So I just created a folder called characters to put my characters into. And I have two characters that I imported. One is named Wilson. He was created in Reillusion's character creator, and I exported him out of there. Joliet, she's from Mixamo. So that's a Mixamo character. And so I wanted to make sure to show you that this can work for different kinds of characters as well. Um, you can use a Mixamo character with these animations, not just with Mixamo animations. So it's it's a way of, of making that work as well. So what you're going to do is just, like I said, create a character folder, import them in one by one. And I'll just show an example of that. I'll import another guy. Let's do Nick. Just, like, just so you can see the process real quick. Because it does, it does matter what the settings are. At least I think it does. Just go to the Nick FBX that I exported out. So this character was also created in Character Creator. Just takes a second to load, but there's there's only a, really a couple settings you need to change in here. This is particularly important with uh, Character Creator characters. What they recommend is these three settings get changed. So if you hit, hit Reset to Defaults, you don't need to change anything here. Normally this would be collapsed. You So this is what it would look like for you. So just check this box for Import Animations. And then you're going to select animated time. And these, these two things are recommended by Reillusion. And I've noticed that if you use this setting for any character you import, it seems to be fine. So I, I think it just kind of creates it, makes it more universal. Go ahead and drill down in this advanced right above there. And there's only two settings you need to change in there. Use T0 as ref pose. What that means is a T pose. And then scroll down to, I'll see a little bit down, import morph targets. That's the only other one. So it's those four, I guess it's four settings. Use T0 as ref pose, import morph targets, and that's under advanced, and then import animations and animated time. That's it. Hit import all. All right, this guy's done. You can just, if you see these error messages, it's very typical. Just hit clear and close this out. Import all your characters and including the UEFN skeleton. Go ahead and uh, create a character folder create some kind of folder that makes sense to you for for the um, this is just going to be the what you're going to use to target the animations that's that uefn skeleton so just you're going to write do the same process though for importing your other characters go to that mannequin that you exported earlier and then again reset defaults if you need to I, you don't necessarily need to do that every single time the only boxes you need to check is use t t0 as ref pose import morph targets and then if you might need to collapse the advanced here check the box for import animations and animated time and hit import all all right so now it's time to import the animations and i just create a folder in the content folder called animations go to the location you saved those animations to so in my case it's here and it's going to be in some subfolders you want to get all the way down into this folder that has the multiple categories and just select them all you know do control a or however you want to select all and just make sure you've got it open in front of in front of the folder you want to drag it to and then you're going to just have them all selected drag them in here and it's then it's going to prompt you and actually i'll just import one in so you can see what i'm talking about 
I was just dragging a single one in just to show you. When you drag the folders in, you'll get the same prompt. And this, the skeleton you want to select is the UEFN skeleton that we just imported. That's the one you want to start with. And then under animation, the animated time. In this case, that's the only thing you need to change because there's no, there's no other of those, the other settings that I mentioned earlier are not in here. And then just Im import all. It's going to take some time. I'm not going to do it again because it takes like about six or seven minutes, uh, depending on the speed of your computer. Once you've got those imported, just go drill down into any of these folders. You go to the idle folder. It doesn't really matter. Just right click on any of them and go retarget animation. And you've already got the skeleton that you want to use as your source. And then whatever character you're retargeting at the moment is what you want to select here. So uh, I'll just do, um, I'll do the Mixmo character first, Joliet. Um, and so now I've got her selected. The beauty of this is that all those animations are tied to this, to this mannequin. And so when you export these out, it'll retarget to all of them at once. So you don't have to do one by one. So what you want to do is just select, click any of these animations in the list and do control A. I don't think you could right click. So you just have to do control A to select them all. And then hit export animations. And then find a logical place to put them. This is exporting them into your project. You're not actually exporting them outside your project, at least not yet. You can do that later though. And that, that will be part of this. Okay. So in my case, I created a folder for my character and you probably have done the same. Go ahead and right click on that folder and make a subfolder for your retargeted animations. Hit the export button. You don't need to change anything here. You can just hit export again. All right. So we've got these retargeted animations now. And so now this character is fully retargeted for 521 animations. So here's an example. So that was just game preview mode. I'm going to show you how to create a level sequence and add it to there and then blend animations as well. Go ahead and drag your character skeletal mesh into the scene and you're going to create a new level sequence. All right, and then click your character and add it to the sequencer. And then we'll go ahead and add an animation. We'll do a climbing one. And as you can see at the top under path, you can see that it's in the retargeted folder. That's really why I emphasized how important it is to create a subfolder so you know where those animations are, so you know which ones they are. When you're dealing with 500 or more, it's really helpful to be able to confirm from which collection you're actually selecting them from. So as you can see, she's actually changing elevation. So she's doing a root motion animation and not in place. If we shorten that animation so that we can blend them together, I'm going to go ahead and do a running animation after it. Just select one of the Mixamo ones that I have. Now, if you do this match with this bone in previous clip, in her case, she doesn't have a root bone, but I just selected head then it will actually line up once you change the match Z height. So it's the same height. And then it's just a matter of doing the normal blending that you would do with Mixomo animations or any other animation. You just uh, kind of line them up as best you can and push them into each other so that they, there's a bit of a transition. Something you'll notice with the running animation is if you just drag it out to extend it like this, it won't work. It'll just keep snapping back to the same original location. And the way to fix that in this case, if you want to extend that animation out, is to hold the Alt key down and drag it out. So instead of stretching it out, you're duplicating it. And then you're going to do the same matching. So you may have to reset it by unchecking the box for match Z height. 
temporarily and then checking it again. You can just keep making more duplicates of the running one and do the same thing and it'll just keep on going. Okay, so the last tip I'm going to give you is if you want to reuse these animations in the future in a future project for the same character, rather than having to import all the animations and retarget them all over again, you can just export the retargeted animations out for that specific character in the form of FBX files. And I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so in the content browser, go ahead and go to your animation folder for that character. Select one of the animations and do Control A to select all. Right click, choose Asset Actions, Bulk Export. Choose a good location for your animations, somewhere where you can find it easily and you can use it in the future. And to be on the safe side, you might as well check the box for Map Skeletal Motion at Root. It's probably not necessary since it's already been mapped that way, but it doesn't hurt anything. And that's it. Thanks for watching this tutorial. If you'd like to see more of these in the future, make sure to like and subscribe. And feel free to put any tutorial requests in the comments. Hi everybody, my name is Wilson. The Simone Pixel channel is at 95 subscribers. Only five more to go and we finally reached 100. Jason was too shy to ask again to help us reach our goal of 100 subs this week. Help us out by subscribing and we'll keep on creating.